Soil generally fails in shear and this section is the first of two covering the shear strength of soil. Here are two examples of shear failure in soil. On the left is the failure surface typically associated with a foundation. On the right is the failure surface typically associated with a slope at the edge of an embankment. In both cases the soil fails when the shear stress along the plane reaches the shear strength of the soil. Soil derives its shear strength from friction between particles. We can use the sliding block analogy as our starting point. When no horizontal or shear force is applied, the table provides a vertical or normal force R which is equal and opposite to the weight W of the block. Once the shear force H is applied, the force R becomes inclined at an angle alpha to the vertical. Resolving the forces horizontally we get that H is equal to R sine alpha and resolving the forces vertically we get that W is equal to R cos alpha. Dividing one equation by the other we get that H over W is equal to tan alpha or H is equal to W tan alpha and dividing across by the contact area A, we get that tau is equal to sigma n times tan alpha. If H, or tau, is increased slowly, sliding will be imminent and alpha will increase to a limiting value, phi, known as the angle of friction. In terms of effective stresses, shear failure is given by tau subscript F is equal to sigma n dash times tan phi dash. Therefore, on a plot of tau against sigma n dash, the limiting frictional resistance is the black line with slope tan phi dash. However, at low normal stresses, you'll see that particle interlocking also contributes to the shear strength, as shown in red. At higher normal stresses, the shear strength is purely derived from friction. This behaviour is conveniently represented in geomechanics by the more Coulomb equation. Tau f is equal to c dash plus sigma n dash tan phi dash. The intercept c dash and the friction angle phi dash should be seen as curve fit parameters to represent the behaviour of soil over a certain range of normal stresses. In this regard, the use of c dash greater than zero at low stresses should be treated with caution. While C dash can represent real cementation between particles in overconsolidated clays, these bonds are broken at high stresses and therefore cannot be relied upon. It is important to note that no such cementation exists in normally consolidated clays and in sands. In other words, C dash is equal to zero in those materials. On the left, we see a general state of stress for a small element of a material. There is one normal stress and two shear stresses acting on each of the faces of the cube. When a face is acted on by a normal stress only and the shear stresses are zero, the plane is referred to as a principal plane and the stress is referred to as the principal stress. In geomechanics, the larger of the two principal stresses, known as the major principal stress, is sigma one dash and this is normally the vertical stress. The minor principal stress is sigma 3 dash and this is normally the horizontal stress. Our interest lies in working out what combination of sigma 1 dash and sigma 3 dash will give rise to shear failure in the soil. Shear failure is represented by the failure plane drawn within the soil element once theta reaches a certain value. Once we know the values of sigma 1 dash and sigma 3 dash, we can represent this state of stress by a Mohr circle as shown. The blue circle is comf comfortably below the Mohr Coulomb failure envelope, so it represents a safe state. However, if sigma 1 dash is increased sufficiently, you can see that the red circle is reached, which means that under those combination of stresses, 
the soil will be on the point of failure and this is obviously an unsafe state. We can use this idea to carry out a number of shear strength tests to failure in the triaxial apparatus, all with different sigma 3 dash values, to generate a number of more circles from which the best fit common tangent can be drawn to estimate shear strength parameters C dash and phi dash. Note that the shear strength at failure is not the highest point of the Mohr circle, but is given by the point of tangency. In this final slide, you can see that we can draw separate Mohr circles for effective stress, as shown in blue, and total stress, shown in orange. The circles are separated by a distance corresponding to the pore water pressure, U.